Tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and football. Is that what most people want? Is a nice, boring place to live? Does boring mean so. quality of life? Is there a Well, I kind of think so. There? And then they stop right there. Honestly, I think I'm going to end up knocking over like five different grannies before people learn. So we have Oreo-flavored Coke, <laughs> Coke-flavored Oreos, and Oreo-flavored Oreos, and Coke-flavored Coke. <laughs> Their like, main identities is being Mormon and being moms, and I really don't see them doing much of either of those two <laughs> things around. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative, Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome, new listeners and viewers. We're so glad you found us. Yeah, glad that you're here. We're IFAF. We've been doing this for just over a year now, Mm -hmm. and we like to see new people coming. We're kind of hockey sticking a little bit. And it's all thanks to you. So let uh, the algorithm know you like Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and bad jokes. Yep, we got plenty of those. There's a subscription (laughs) link in this post. Coming up on this episode, we found a new resource for Mm -hmm. Pickle Pizza in East Idaho. And you can get it year-round. Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Cliffhanger (sighs) ending. How'd the fair do this year? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of haunted events this Friday. One major haunted attraction opening Mm -hmm. this Friday. We'll tell you about what's the most boring state that you'd never guess Bet you'll never guess. <laughs> and finally, if you're a snowmobile enthusiast that is also enthusiastic about running over wild animals, boy, does Wyoming have a deal for you. Right. Maybe. Uh, yeah. And if you are, I also have a lot of questions for you. Like, um, did you get enough hugs as a child? <laughs> and how many people have you murdered? As is evidenced by the title of our thumbnail this episode and what we are currently wearing, mm-hmm. it's Sweater Weather! Yay! <laughs> well, you know what? At least the weather's turned. Oh, Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! Oh, God, I was. Finally, Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! It's about time! It's about time! Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! Finally, Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! Sweater Weather! And Sweater Puppy Season! Fellas, hide your hoodies. Ah, classic. Love it. That and it's so cozy. From 2007, I think. Wow. Yeah. That feels like forever ago. <laughs> Tell me about this sweater. This sure is loud. I wish we could turn the volume down. It's not quite a Cosby sweater. So I personally love this sweater. Okay. I actually, I bought it back when I was working in a, re- a retail shop not too long ago. Um, and I just thought it was so cool and just really interesting. And here's the thing. When I saw it, I was like, man, Mike would look so good in that. But I also knew that you wouldn't want to wear it. <laughs> I don't wear sweaters. <laughs> I know. I sometimes wear hoodies. Yeah, which is such a shame, too, because I think you look really good in a sweater. But it's fine. Anyway, the point is, uh, I knew you wouldn't wear it too much, so I sort of presented it to you. I don't know if you remember. But I was like, look, I get that you don't like sweaters, so this can be a shared sweater. We yes. can both wear it. and It's it's bulky on me. I'm surprised it even fits you. Well, it, I do the oversized look with it. Uh, okay. So it works well. You know, a little right. pair of leggings underneath it, and it's nice. Okay. Plus, it just, you know, it looks cute. I like the colors. I think it's so fun. It's sort of desert looking, you know? Yeah, it's the mountains in the yeah. high desert. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of Idaho, so I thought that was fun. Orange, yellow, blue. Yeah. And here's our dirty little secret just between us. Uh-huh. You and me and the person listening right now. <laughs> Um, the single and only person. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm wearing this sweater. I'm representing the Jeff and Greg podcast. <laughs> That's nice. Under my sweater. Yeah. Yeah. I actually listened to your um, episode that you did with them, and oh. I, I had a really good time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, and Jeff and Greg, you can tell me if I'm right or not, but I'm pretty positive that their theme song samples the Imperial March from Star Wars. The bass line does go, dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 doesn't it? it? I'm positive it does. Yeah. I, now, I was listening in my car, and it was turned down just a little bit, and I turned it up right at the end, so maybe I missed it. But I'm pretty sure, and I bet you they'll confirm that I'm right. And John Williams is famous for ripping off... Or, uh-huh. or drawing inspiration from other pieces of classical music. Right, right. Um, for example, the Empire, the uh, Imperial March from Empire Strikes Back, you know, it was mm-hmm. never in Star Wars. Right. Empire was the first film with, to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it sort of rips off Chopin's Funeral March that goes... Which makes perfect sense, too, because like... Who's Darth Vader but a bringer of death? Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, his name was originally going to be Dark Water. Really? Yeah. 
Lucas had a few, he was kicking around a few things. Huh. And there's some theories that, um, let's see, he's the Dark Lord of the Sith. So okay. you take the you take the first two letters of his title and the last two letters of his title, Darth. Oh, okay. He okay. Was, at one point, I think Lucas had written down in his handwritten notes, you can find him on the internet, mm -hmm. Dark Invader. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Vader is like, mm -hmm. comes from Invader. Right, which makes sense. And also is the German word for father. And wasn't Luke Skywalker going to be... Luke Starhopper or something like something that. Like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. glad he ended up with the names he ended up with. Right, right. Yeah, dark water sounds a little too much like gray water, which makes <laughs> yeah. me think of sewage. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. is uh, not... Makes me think of dumping out the RV. <laughs> right. Definitely not as um, intimidating. Speaking <laughs> of which, who is it that has the take a dump billboards oh. on I-15 heading north to Idaho Falls? I think it's Camp... Camp World, Camping World. Is it Camping World or I'm is it? I thought sure. it was a gas station. Anyway, gosh, I don't know. In big letters, you see "Take a Dump," right? And then they write in like your RV for a. Well, no. It, so it's a, or something. They change it to "Take an RV Dump." Yeah, they they Which, like write it in with a little pen. Yeah, you know. Well, and I remember seeing that and being like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> Like, do I have to be an RV owner to understand this billboard fully? Do well, yeah, they just mean dumping out the system, or do they mean like take a dump in an RV? Like, what do they mean here? When you go, I think when you go to an RV park, right, you got to dump that gray water, right. Which I knew that part, but yeah. I didn't know if they were talking about that or if they were talking about taking a big old, a big old <laughs> floater in an RV. <laughs> right, you know, right. <laughs> which I mean, definitely isn't the most uncomfortable place to take a big old shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, probably also not the most comfortable place. We got there fast on this episode. <laughs> right. Hope you're not eating breakfast. <laughs> Hope you're not eating a bowl of cereal tonight. Right. Or even worse, oatmeal. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm the worst. I want to get straight to the comments and follow-ups because I think we have... An epic treat time tonight. I'm really excited. Didn't mention this last time. Sorry, Andrea Todd Drea on Facebook. She is the president of the other IFAF. Oh, fun. You've you've met yes, her a couple met her, times yeah. at the IFAF Awards, mm -hmm. the Idaho Falls Advertising Federation Awards. Yeah, which they always do such a great job on their little award show that they do. It's so fun. Yeah, I wonder what the theme is going to be this coming year. Ooh, good question. They usually go with something in advance. Right. So I don't think it'll right. be Olympics. Huh, I wonder what it is going to be. What's going to be hot next year? Hmm. Anyway, Drea says, hey, Lucy's Pizza has a pickled pizza. Yes. Yeah, I'm so glad she said something. Thank you, Drea. Mm -hmm. We got one. We tried it. It's amazing. It's, it's called, amazing. It's called the Pizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I love the name, uh, but it was very good. Yeah. Uh, I think that, okay, so if Combines we're talking- Pizza and pickle, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. It's just yeah. doesn't sound good. Yeah. Pizzle sounds like something you do in an alleyway <laughs> right. late night behind a bar. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> now, really quick, I just want to do a, a quick comparison of the two pickle pizzas we've had recently. Because we did have the one from, we were blown away when we got uh -huh. to do the food tasting for the fair and Mama and Papa Leo's. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't have a physical location. No, well, so I we're mean, not they cheating have the one on at them. the fair, but... But yeah, they only yeah. have the thing at the fair. Right, that's it. And we had it, we loved it. Yes, yeah. And then what What do you think? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to come straight out the gate saying it. I do think that the Mom and Papa Leo's is slightly better, which is shocking because I thought that the uh, Lucy's Pizza had a much more pickly flavor to it. But here's the difference. I liked the creaminess of the Mom and Papa Leo's. I felt like it had a little bit more of that than the Lucy's Pizza did. Um, and I also liked that they went with the Dave's Hot Pickles, which I think add an extra flavor to the pizza that Lucy's didn't have. The, theirs felt a little bit more one note and less complicated than Mom and Papa Leo's did. But they're damn similar. And I will respectfully disagree with you mm -hmm. in that that one note on the pizzle, uh -huh. on the Lucy's Pizza Pickle Pizza, uh -huh. uh, was so good. It was. That I actually prefer the Lucy's over the Mama and Papa Leo's. Okay, fair enough. And, and, I, and maybe it's because you can get it year round, not just during the fair. Which is really nice. Now, that being said, I think I would like the Lucy's one better if I was planning to dip it. 
Because like a little bit of that dill ranch mm-hmm. or even some of that garlic sauce that you can get from Pizza Hut. Next time we get one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I definitely think that that pizza is better for dipping. Um, so that kind of works out in, you and, know, mom and Papa Leo's favor, favor since they don't really, you can't really dip it while you're at the fair because you're walking around and yeah. stuff. And, be a pain and i really like lucy's pizza crust it's new york style crust it's thin Mm -hmm. um but it's got you know a handle on the edge it's a little thicker Mm -hmm. but it's the perfect combination for me of crispy on the outside chewy on the inside yes i agree with that and it was so pickly Mm -hmm. it was almost don't let this be a turnoff to you it was almost but not quite sour yes yeah, and that part I did really like about yeah. it. You could really taste the pickle brine to it, which was nice. And I didn't think that the crust on the Lucy's pizza was bad. Sometimes I don't love Lucy's crust because I'm a thick crust girl. I like I like things the yuck. You do. You <laughs> you do. You're a thick girl. <laughs> I am. T-H-I-C-C. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Because I don't tend to like thin crust, I don't tend to love Lucy's crust. I don't hate it by any means. But I did think that the one on their pickle pizza was particularly good. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's somehow different. It's probably not. I wonder if it just marries with the flavors better than maybe with some of the others. It tasted. And if you've missed all the episodes up until now, um, what we're talking about basically is a pizza crust, Alfredo sauce, Mm -hmm. pickles for the topping, and... um, Dill sprinkled on top. Mm -hmm. That's both of those Mama and Papa Leo's and Lucy's have, I think that and mostly in common. Mostly. Now, here's another thing. I think that the Lucy's pizza only does mozzarella cheese, whereas the Mama and Papa Leo's does mozzarella and cheddar. I think you're right. Which I also liked. The uh, the other thing that I noticed about the pizzle Mm -hmm. uh, or this kind, this style of pizza in general is. I'm a hungry boy. I need my protein. <laughs> yes. You eat three slices of that, and like two hours later, you're hungry. Right, I'm right. I'm hungry. I mean, there's So maybe still drink protein. a protein shake with it or something. <laughs> there's definitely still protein in the cheese, at least. Yeah, it's not. But I you're, do think- Carly that, thinks soup is a meal. I love a soup. What's wrong with soup? It's like a appetizer. Don't you dare. It doesn't fill you up. <laughs> Don't you dare trash talk soup. <laughs> Depends on the soup. All right. Uh, Now, that being said, I feel like on either of those pizzas, you could add sausage and it would be delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So I almost wonder if what we should do is we should get the pizzle, add sausage, add cheddar. I love it. Yeah. Because I think that would be the the perfect pickle pizza. Take and bake, don't they? I think they do. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I called them once on a Monday. Mm Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, we, we can only do carry out because our ovens are, aren't working. Oh, I think. bummer. <laughs> it was only a few weeks ago. Oh, funny. Too. But, um, oh, one other general piece of advice I want to give, just in case you haven't heard this yet, is did you know that one 18-inch pizza has, has more square footage than two 12-inch pizzas? That makes sense, actually. Yeah. If you're ever... Okay, so... And I don't know. You do math and use pie somehow. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean... Two two 12 inches. Yeah. 226 square inches of pizza. Mm -hmm. One 18 inch, 254 square inches. Yeah. Math magic. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's because you're getting all of that outer layer, you know? Something to do Those with hypotenuses and circumferences, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I used to know how to find the area of a circle. <laughs> I could probably figure it out if I really had to, but I sure as shit don't remember off the top of my head. And he got Anybody got a protractor <laughs> or a compass? What would you, I don't know. Uh, for that one, you, well, I mean, f- to find the area of it, you wouldn't need either of those. Okay. But a protractor is always helpful for find- finding the angles. Of things. Okay. So, I mean, a compass would be good if you were drawing circles. I guess I was being obtuse. (laughs) Okay. Geometry joke. (laughs) Oh, last Monday, when our episode last aired, um, it was uh, the 100th birthday of LDS President Russell Nelson. Oh. On September 9th. We forgot to say something. Oh, we missed that. Oh, well. Wow, your birthday is just after his. Only three days. Yeah. Speaking of the church, Mm -hmm. we finished... 
Last week we started. Yes. <laughs> this this pe- or last episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode we finished the secret lives of Mormon wives. Now, full disclaimer: I did totally miss a couple of episodes in there. I watched the first the first few episodes. Mike watched a few without me because he hates me, I guess. And then I watched the last few. Um, what a cliffhanger! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is Dakota a dirty, dirty cheater? Will I mean, Whitney probably. come back to mom talk? <laughs> And something else they didn't cover, damn it, was uh, how much? How did Zach do gambling? Yeah. We know that, okay, there's uh, Jen and Zach Affleck. Uh-huh. Are they even still together at this point? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, I kind of hope not because he seems like a douche. <laughs> he does. He seems like a real control freak. Man, I can't imagine choosing to do one of these shows when you're a douche. Yeah. Because then you know everyone's going to know you're a douche. Uh, that's the thing about douches. Is I don't think they know they're douches. (laughs) That's true. That's true. (laughs) But yeah. Hmm. So he's like, in the same breath, like in the same conversation, or they edited it to look this way. Mm Mm-hmm. He's so the girls want to go see some Chip and Dale's dancers right. in Vegas. I mean, if you're going to Sin City, yeah, good, clean fun. You might as well fun for the whole family. <laughs> and I fully support that. Get your jollies where you can. Hmm. But in this, in the same breath, he says. She's like, you don't mind if I go, do you? And he says something like, not if you still want to be married. Yeah, right. Then he asks her, because I believe these women are the sugar mamas. Oh, yeah. They are the primary breadwinners in the household. Well, and they actually explicitly say it for their relationship because he's going to medical school. And she's Uh, funding all of that for him. Yeah. And taking care of all the bills and the kids. And in the same breath. Well, I mean, not really, because they've got nannies, but you know. Right. (laughs) What do you remember what you told me after watching after the show concluded? I do. Okay. I do. I basically said, you know, it's so funny because their like main identities that they harp on this entire series is being Mormon and being moms. And I really don't see them doing much of either of those two things throughout. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Uh-huh. But in the same breath as he expresses jealousy and control mm-hmm. over Jen, mm-hmm. Zach says something like, hey, and can I borrow some money for gambling? Yeah. She well, gives him $2,500. Like I was going to say, it's a pretty good amount of money, too. Yeah. yeah. So I want to know, how did he do? Did he lose it all? Right. And you know what? I do think that the argument is big? sort of contingent on how he did. Yeah. Too. <laughs> kind of. You know, especially if does he Does he did... get to say, I told you so? Right. Or does he... You know? yeah, or does and he... does he buy her a fur coat yes. to say thank you? Right. I kind of want to know, too. That's a big... Maybe I, maybe they said it and I missed it. I Googled no, it before the show and I didn't, didn't see anything. I, I remember wanting to know that same thing, too. And I was like hanging on every word to try to figure out if he did well or not. They don't tell you. And <laughs> so, I yeah, I think, A, I think a lot of things are staged on this show and it's obvious. Right. And B, I think there's a lot of selective editing. Yeah. I, you know? I mean, that's any trash TV. Last... Last episode, I was kind of veering toward Team Taylor, um, and I realized it's it's all in the editing. You know, oh, yeah. the, they're making Whitney look like the bad guy, and she's not. And they're trying to redeem Taylor, and I'm not sure she deserves it. So anyway, here's the thing, I I hate this show. <laughs> I hate it. I the right. entire time I watched it, I was mad. I loathe myself for yeah. having watched the entire season, right. eight episodes, and the only forty-five reason, minutes each. And it, exactly, and the only reason we watched it was for you guys, so you're welcome. <laughs> um, but we'll yeah, jump on a grenade or two from time to time. For <laughs> just you. the entire time we watched it, I was angry. I didn't like any of them, you know. And also, like Whitney is being vil- villainized, and I don't think she's good. Don't get me wrong. Really, all she's doing is trying to stay in her lane and, like, get away from the drama. And I don't blame her. I don't. Yeah, but she's also causing drama at the same time. Anyway, Uh, it's with an ending like that, you would expect a season two. (laughs) Right now, there's no word on if there will be one. I assume there's gonna be. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But yeah, I also think it's kind of funny that they call it Secret Lives of Mormon Wives when Taylor isn't even married. Oh, back, <laughs> just yeah. kidding. <laughs> back to the uh, fair for just a second. We did hear they had a record-breaking year. Now, they've broken attendance records mm-hmm. six out of the last 10 years. I know. Isn't that incredible? And if you thought it was a little crowded this year, you're right. A mm-hmm. total of over the 10 days. Mm-hmm. They start on a Friday and then end the Sunday of the following weekend. Uh, 254,209. Nice. People, you were right about that. Thank you. I think I said in casual <laughs> you conversation. You said 201. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Carly corrected me, so I'm like Googling it. Going, <laughs> I'll show you. Oh, she was right. What do you know? 
Who okay. thought? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they're going to work with that in the future. Because if it keeps getting more and more, you know, populated, do you think they're going to extend it? Extend the days or yeah. find a new place? I don't know. Man, can you imagine if they moved the fairgrounds? You know, we were there on a Tuesday night this year. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was perfect. Right. It was so nice. The previous year, especially right after Gaffigan, mm -hmm. it was, as an old friend of mine used <sighs> to say, nuts to butts. It was terrible. <laughs> it really did. It took 20 minutes to walk 20 feet. If you were agoraphobic or claustrophobic. Oh. Uh, or, or if you just plain old don't like people because they suck. <laughs> people running into you and you running into people phobic. Mm -hmm. And just and what's up with people? Zero situational awareness. You know what I'm talking about. They walk out of the main entrance of a building and just stand there in the middle. <laughs> there is nothing that makes me more angry. Honestly, from now on, I think I'm just going to start running into them. <laughs> and just be like, oh, sorry, you were right in the middle of a walkway. I didn't see you stop. It's worse than Winco on a Saturday. <laughs> oh, it makes me so mad. And it keeps happening to me. And yeah. it's when I'm like in a rush and I've got like my power walk going and then they stop right there. Honestly, I think I'm going to end up knocking over like five different grannies before people learn. Now, I, uh, <laughs> I'm extremely... Um, reserved in situations like that i just sort of stand there and try to get into their peripherals so they can see me and maybe acknowledge that they're right in the middle of the damn aisle right um like just when we went to the ben folds concert the other day carly on the other hand <laughs> will say excuse me well yeah, i you, mean yeah which is a polite thing to do yeah well and also if you're in the way and i need to get past you I'm not wrong for saying You're excuse me, even if I say it a little rude, because you shouldn't be blocking this whole area. That's right. So we were one of the first people out of Ben Folds. Mm -hmm. There's uh, two doorways going out. Yeah. And the people right in front of us, knowing that a full theater yes. of people were exiting, stopped right in the doorway. Completely blocked one. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe, like, especially because they could have taken literally two steps to the side yeah. <laughs> and let people through the doorway, but they didn't. I couldn't believe it. Are we the assholes? No, I refuse to believe we are. <laughs> hey, this is a good time to tell you about the <laughs> Ben Folds show, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So it was the paper airplane tour, and I had no idea what that means. You know, those mm -hmm. alt indie rockers. Right. <laughs> they do. They call things weird names. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize is, during intermission, he played, you know, the first half of the show. Right. Then there was an intermission where you went out to the lobby, grabbed a piece of paper, a cute pen that says, I've got mine around here somewhere, that says, I stole this from Ben Folds. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> you write the request down on a piece of paper, you fold it into a paper airplane and throw it on stage. Mm -hmm. Here he is saying, three, two, one. All the planes go flying onto the stage. You'll notice there were a bunch already because people didn't get the memo that you couldn't just do it during intermission. Well, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. Yeah. I did capture a moment of someone's glory. I don't know who it is. Watch the guy in the red hat. He throws the plane and it lands directly on Ben Fold's piano keyboard. Mm -hmm. In fact, it looks yeah. like his piano is so shiny uh -huh. that it looked like it crashed into another plane. But that's just the reflection of the plane. Right. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Yeah. Just a, hey, man, nice shot. Right. Way to go, buddy. I posted it hoping that he would see it. I don't know I if he did. I hope he does. I hope yeah. he does. I hope someone says something to him. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, now, here's the bullshit part of, the, of that. Uh -huh. Ben Folds did not choose that airplane. No. Which I thought was just crap. He set it on top of the piano or something. Yeah. And here's some, the cynical <laughs> Gen Xer in me believes that that's a perfect way to pick up a piece of paper and then play whatever the hell you want. I mean, kind of. You know what I mean? I do. I yeah. do. His big hit was Brick. Yeah. Which is a really sad song about Schmush Martian. Oh. Uh, did you know that? Yeah. I did not. I loved his alt hit in the late 90s, Army. Yes, because well, that's I a great one. I thought about the army. Dad said, son, you must be high. I feel like that song is bigger than Brick. Oh yeah, I well I think so too. It yeah. was it was but it was I think it performed better at alt alternative right. radio that makes than sense. mainstream radio. And then you like Draw a Crowd. I love Draw a Crowd. <laughs> Honestly, one of my favorite songs, period. Uh huh. Here's another thing that drove me a little nuts. And to be fair, I had a great time at the concert. I thought it was really good. Uh Ben Folds is an excellent entertainer. He really is, wasn't he? Was, he? he was a really fun 
person to watch. He did the thing where he yeah. set up each song and yeah. made a few jokes. And yeah. It, well, there was one part, too, where a kid started crying and he started, like, duetting with the kid, basically. Hilarious. And, like, I just Quick love on that. his feet. I love that he had such a good attitude. Yeah. There was also a part where um, he picked up a paper that said uh, Shivers, I think, on it. He had no, fu- he had no idea... What the song was? Sorry, I edited it there. Don't mind me. That was good. That was good. (laughs) Right? Um, You've been listening to too much Jeff and Greg. I think I did, honestly. (laughs) He basically made up a song. I think it was Ed Sheeran Shivers. Oh, okay. I think was the song that they were trying to get him to sing, which why? Like you're at a Ben Folds concert, ask for a Ben Folds song, but whatever. (laughs) But yeah, he brought out his opener and they made up a little song right there. And it it was actually really fun. It It was mildly amusing. Yeah. Entertaining. Uh, he picked up one that said, according to him, we will never know, uh-huh. said no diggity, yes. which of course is by Blackstreet. And you know that because you were on <laughs> pop radio the exact same time they were, but he pretended not to. Yeah. Thinking right. he was maybe a Taylor Swift song or something. <laughs> Just a funny guy. Right. Absolutely. But the, okay, a great time. But the other thing that drove me nuts is that he introed a song and I thought for sure it was draw a crowd because he said something about like, you know, being angry and young and da da da. And then he also referenced Stevie Wonder, which is also referenced in the song Draw a Crowd. So I thought for sure that was it. And it kind of looked like he'd picked up my plane. I drew a little boner on it. So I was hoping that he would choose it because of that. Carly did draw the, the <laughs> classic uh, shaft yeah. and two balls. Yeah. <laughs> because the lyrics of Draw a Crowd are. Yeah. If you're feeling small and you can't draw a crowd, draw dicks on the wall. But like, yeah, he basically... Great advice, by the way. Yeah, and he basically talked about (laughs) seeing dicks on the wall, and he said something about uh, Stevie Wonder, and I thought for sure he was going to play it. And then he played... Rock, uh, rock and suburbia instead. Rock in the suburbs. Sorry, thank you. Which was another one of his hits. Also, at all, rock. yeah, and also yeah. great, and I loved it, and that was fun. But like, I want to draw a crowd, damn it! And I thought for sure I was going to get it, and the fact that he took that away from me, Ben Folds, I will never forgive you. I do think that an artist <laughs> has the responsibility to the crowd to mm-hmm. play their hits. At least, yeah. Do, do a couple other fun things too, but play the hits. Yeah. A recurring theme on this very show. <laughs> Play the damn hits. Yeah. I mean, he did have a couple of his of his hits in there, but I would have liked to have seen at least two more. Is it time to sell your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate. And I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. You know we have the insight on the Idaho Falls community, and we know the current real estate market too. Plus, we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. When it's time to sell your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Lincoln Post. Go thrifting for your new fall look at Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, save on fabulous fall fashions, including sweater weather, sweaters, hoodies, cardigans, layering tops, denim, boots, and sneakers. Find trendy fashion that's budget-friendly at Elsie's Closet. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Are you looking for help with your upcoming wedding or event? You don't have to do it all on your own. DIY Weddings and Event Rentals has great ideas for you, like the Polaroid guest book, candy salad jars, even a full-service drink trailer. And everything you need, like backdrops, signs, dinnerware, and decorations. Call or text 208 403-2040 today. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first rental at DIY Weddings and Event Rentals. Do you want locally raised beef for the holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. It is crockpot season, so make your favorite pot roast with the tender four-pound chuck roast that's included. For your own farm-to-table experience, find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. For their 10th anniversary, Roof Rescue just gave away four free roofs to exceptional members of our community. The winners are... Andrew and Elizabeth, who are teachers involved in youth athletics. John and Ariel, who work to help feed the hungry. JJ is a volunteer firefighter. He and his wife, Margot help with foster care. Chris is in law enforcement and the Army Reserve. His wife, Sarah, is a teacher. Congrats again from Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Did you have family or friends visit Idaho Falls this summer? 
Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton t-shirts. Including these cool throwback versions of the Civic Auditorium, the West Bank, and the Water Tower. Check out tetontshirts.com, type that right into the URL field, or click the link on this post. These exclusive designs are not available in gift shops. tetontshirts.com. Wear a real piece of Idaho Falls. Okay, I think we're finally here. It's treat time. I'm so excited because I'm out of water and I need something for this dry mouth. <laughs> Such a neat time. Better than smelling feet time. <laughs> it's treat time. Ooh, are we going to start singing that every time? Because I love it. Yeah. Speaking of, I had a couple I of so. those uh, pickled quail eggs Our before I came over here. Our show needs more production value, really. <laughs> I did. Oh, oh they're I? so good. I had to stop myself from eating the whole damn jar. I've been seeing these on the internets and came into possession of them today. But first, let's play. So it, within our fe- within our show, we have a feature, Treat Time. Within the feature, <laughs> Treat Time, we have a little game we sometimes like to play called What's in the Bag? <laughs> okay. So you told me earlier. It was What's in the Box, but since we don't have Gwyneth Paltrow's <laughs> head. Right. <laughs> All right. Now, you told me earlier not to get into the fridge. Yeah. Um, I totally forgot. <laughs> I got in there anyway. I did not see what was in there. But you didn't see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had these well right. covered. <clears throat> yeah, but I had said like, oh, hey, can I get Dr. Pepper? And you're like, no, 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 wait, because we're going to do something else. So I'm assuming it's a drink. Yes. Um, uh, Is it liquid death? No. Mm, okay. Is it some sort of seltzer water? Kind of. Interesting. It okay. is. <gasps> oh, Oreo Coca-Cola. Oreo flavored Coke Zero. <laughs> okay, I'm actually really One excited because you. you told me about this the other day, and that sounded fascinating. And also, shum for me. <laughs> now, I don't. Okay, here's something that's going to make a lot of people mad. Huh. I don't like Coke. To be fair, I also don't like Pepsi. Okay, you don't like cola. I don't. I don't. The only cola What's your problem, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the only cola I like is root beer. Okay, but I'm excited to try this. I think it'll be fun, and I will say. But wait, the... there's more. Oh, really? There's levels to this shit. Okay, yeah. well, let me finish my sentence real quick. Uh, I will say that the Coca-Cola Dream World. What was that one? Oh, the yeah, the one that tasted like cotton candy. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. it the dream? I thought the Dream World was kind of fruity. That oh yeah, that was the mango one. Was it, it was the, the one. It, it was, was the, the space, space one. one. Yeah. Which I still have a 12 pack of, by the way. <gasps> yeah, that one oh. kind of converted me, yeah. especially to the flavored Cokes. I thought those were really fun. So, to recap, so far we have Oreo flavored Coca Cola. Uh huh. To go along with them, we have <gasps> Coca Cola flavored Oreos. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. What the hell, guys? <laughs> okay, but this is. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> no. No, this is genius. Okay. This is the perfect collab. But to go along with those, and you might consider this redundant, Carly, but I consider it establishing a good frame of reference. (gasps) Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We have Coke Zero and plain Oreos. Oh my gosh. We have, so, okay, so we have Oreo flavored Coke, (laughs) Coke flavored Oreos, and Oreo flavored Oreos, and Coke flavored Coke. (laughs) I love it. Also, I think first we should have a Coke and an Oreo. I love that idea. All right. Also, I have been craving Oreos lately, so I hope you know that you are rocking my socks right now. I'm so (laughs) damn excited. (laughs) Okay. Let's try an Oreo and a Coke Zero. Oh, these new bottles are uh, recycled. 100% recycled. That's nice. Ready? Ready. Okay. I think I'm going to go Coke, Oreo, Coke. Mm. Yep. That tastes like a Coke Zero. (laughs) See, it's the aftertaste that I don't like in Coke. It always tasted moldy to me. What? Mm. Now, Mike, yeah. how do you tend to eat an Oreo? Just like that? Just like this. I don't. Every once in a while, I'll take the cookies off and scrape my teeth to get the cream. Mm. So my favorite way to eat an Oreo is to take off the cookies, and then you can actually roll the cream off into a little burrito. Then I'll eat the cookies right. first. And right. then I'll eat the cream last. I've seen her do it. It's so good. What I really like to do, too, is get several of them and, like, stash the cream aside so I can just go to town on the cream at the end. <laughs> That's amazing. Some people would probably watch me do that and think I was a serial killer, though. <laughs> okay, I believe I've now established a frame of reference for my taste buds. Mm-hmm. I now know what a Coke and an Oreo taste like. And I got to say, damn. Mm-hmm. Never had this come. You've never had. No. 
It's good. Yeah, I've never really thought to. Hmm. Especially because, like, Oreo's whole shtick is milk's favorite cookie. It literally says it on the packaging. Right. So, like, you're not going to grab a Coke to go with an Oreo. You're going to grab some good old-fashioned milk. By the way, you've got some Oreo on your sweater. <sighs> Let me show you how we deal with this. <laughs> Oink! Okay. <clears throat> Rango, go to town, buddy. It's chocolate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they can have a little bit. Oh, now you have, <laughs> now oh, you no. have a little. <laughs> Carly, that's chocolate. Oh, your dog God. is going to die now. <laughs> it's okay. See, it's okay when she does it. I did. Okay. The difference is that you encouraged him. <laughs> now let's open the, or do you think, yeah, I think we should start with the Oreo flavored Coke. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It smells like Coke. Okay, it tastes like a Coke with a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of vanilla, as in what's in an Oreo. It's kind of hard to tell because I can't tell if I just have residual Oreo flavor in my mouth. There's three stages to this Oreo-flavored Coke. First taste is Coke. Second taste is a little bit of that chocolatey bite from the Oreo cookie. And the last taste, it finishes on burp. <laughs> Gross. I mean, we are drinking a bunch of sugary, <laughs> bubbly water. Is a well, creamy so that... type finish. I don't taste a huge difference. This tastes like a vanilla Coke to me. Okay. I don't really taste the chocolate. So I don't know. And now for the Coupe de Gracie, <laughs> the Peace de Resistance. <laughs> So I guess, and just to, good Whoa, Lord, sorry. that was a wet one. <laughs> there was a lot of soda. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. We're not, we're not even going to mute that. You're so mean. I even tried to like turn away. That is such a good looking cookie though. Look at that. That is the perfect looking collab cookie. Yeah. I love the little, the little soda cans on it. That's so cute. So instead of. Oh, I love and they've got that. different little packs. Okay, okay. So instead, they've got one on a dark brown classic Oreo cookie on one side. Yes. But then a red cookie on the other side that's oh, Coke branded. These smell amazing. And I want to warn you, they've got uh, the little Pop Rocks in them Give me an whatever. extra one. Ooh, ooh, I love it when they yeah. do the little Pop Rocks. Yeah. Sorry, I want to do one the normal person's way where mm -hmm. you eat it like a sandwich and then I want to peel one and, <laughs> and eat it like that. Okay. <laughs> like I might join psycho. you in that. Right? All right, let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. Hmm. Whoa. That's that's amazing. Are you thinking what I'm the yeah. <laughs> Damn. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now th if only they would do this was with, with A and W. Because wouldn't that be an incredible combo too? Oh man. There's your million dollar or idea or oh. ordea Arido. Oreo. Mm-hmm. Mm. The red cookie tastes different than the brown cookie. I don't know what it is, but man, I sure do like it. It tastes like Coke. Yeah, the red cookie almost has a little bit of uh, vanilla to it, too, which I really like. Man, this is a really good cookie. And then I can feel all the tingly little pop rocks in the back of my mouth. This is really nice. I, I'm all, Yeah, I'm sitting here wondering what the hell took you guys so long. Right. This is great. Mm-hmm. So the Oreo-flavored Coke, I don't think anything to jump up and down about. Mm -mm. But the Coke flavored Oreos, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think these are too uh, cold to roll the cream off like I like. Oh, because I had them in the fridge. Which is okay. I'm just going to lick it off instead like a, <laughs> in like the a monster. In the IFA test kitchen. Although honestly, I might even eat it on this cookie because this cookie I really, really like. Okay. This is scrum to I'm having a great time. <laughs> we could do this for the rest of the show, seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The red cookie mm -hmm. with the frosting is my fave. It's so good. Yeah, I don't know what it is that they did to that cookie, but I really do like it. <laughs> you would too. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And I love the little Pop Rocks. That's so nice. By the way, we know that um, sometimes mm. you only listen to podcasts in the shower, in the car, mm -hmm. when your eyes are doing something else. Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes you're missing, I don't know, 25% of the show. 
Some of the physical comedy for sure. No. <laughs> oh man. Some of the visual jokes. So I'm I kind of don't want to show this to the camera, but I do. Do it. So let's be gross. I licked off some of the cream. Let's get weird the, and play Mario. The cool Mario thing about Kart. this is that now you can see the little popping crystals in it, mm -hmm. and they're kind of cola flavored. Mm. Or cola colored is yeah. the word I was looking for, <laughs> and also cola flavored. To be fair, but yeah, that is just delightful. I really am enjoying this. There's my tease marks. <laughs> Mike, someone's going to use that to frame you for murder. Hmm. <laughs> 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 This is so good. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of Coke flavor in the frosting, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I really liked, too. Yeah. Yeah, and those little Pop Rocks are cola flavored. Home run. Mm-hmm. Oreo. Oh, I know. And Coca-Cola. Oh, I'm going to be so sad when they get rid of these. You had to collab on that. Well, I did get an extra box. Oh, <laughs> you are the best. <laughs> what can we say? We love food flavored food <laughs> here on IFAF. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been snowmobiling? Yes, actually. Once when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. I'd love to go again. And did, were you driving the snowmobile or were you hanging on to somebody driving the snowmobile? Pretty like, sure I was hanging on to my Uncle Daniel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and I that was my snowmobiling experience to the first time. Yeah. And I've taken one out a few times on my own. Oh, that's fun. With a group of people, but actually driving. Yeah. You know what? Let's rent a snowmobile this season. That'll a lot be of fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Island Park, you'll see. You'll I'd be, be happy to ride, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be driving 60 miles an hour uh -huh. uh, through Island Park, and there's a snowmobile, not quite, but almost keeping up with you in the trail <laughs> right next to the road. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know if my mom would be okay with that, though, after the four-wheeling accident I, I was mm -hmm. in when I was a kid. <laughs> my brother ended up in the hospital for a month. So you know, one we of, go, we just have to be careful. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do in a snowmobile is run over wildlife. And kill them. Um, hey, Mike, what the f <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. I kid, I kid, but apparently- Okay, good, because otherwise you'd be a psycho. <laughs> apparently, this is what they're doing in Wyoming. And should a House bill, uh, a draft bill headed for legislative committee advance, uh, those who do enjoy that sort of activity will have that right protected by law explicitly. In that, Wyoming. <laughs> okay, that is such a bad idea, idea on like so many levels here. Now, hang on. We're not talking about the cute little jackalopes, Carly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're talking about pre uh, animals classified as predators, like a wolf. That's even worse. Okay, let me paint you a little word picture here, all right? You're a dumbass. Mm -hmm. You're on a snowmobile having a great time. You see a wolf. Let's say for sake of argument that you're a dumbass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, you decide <laughs> to mow this wolf down, but you don't quite get it. Mm -hmm. You get it enough that you kind of hurt it, but not too bad. But on top of that, when you do it, you damage your snowmobile and now it can't move. And you've got a pissed off wolf who's ready to eat you. A pissed off apex predator. Yeah. yeah. That just seems dumb. And- Okay, let's paint another picture. Let's say all goes well. You run down this wolf, it dies, and now you're covered in blood and guts? Like, that's just gross. Why would you choose to do that? I guess someone in Daniel, Wyoming, a dude struck an adolescent wolf with a snowmobile, muzzled oh. it, collared it, and paraded it through a sublet county bar. So it was still alive? For hours. Yeah, that's that seems cruel. That's mean, dude. Don't make a walk around when it's already hurt. I don't like that. That's... And what are you doing with a wolf muzzle? Well, I mean, a dog muzzle would also fit on a wolf. I guess. <laughs> so. I guess. It's a little weird that he just had it with him. See, that's some serial killer shit, if you ask me. You know what this sounds like? <laughs> this sounds like the Pacific Northwest version of the Alabama law that allows you to run over a deer and keep it for eating. Well, okay. Isn't they, don't they do that there in Georgia or Alabama to or something? To be some... fair, that's just not being wasteful. <laughs> I kind of get it. Is How the does thing. wolf meat taste, I wonder? Probably like dog. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <I'm sorry>. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Knowing that wolves are ancient ancestors of yeah. the common dog. But yeah, they're pretty closely related. <laughs> oh, man. That just seems so... <laughs> to me. <laughs> right, which I get... And also, realistically, we are just kind of a, waste, a wasteful society. There's nothing wrong with the meat. 
I don't see a big deal with it. I get that it's not the classiest, but also we need to destigmatize that because there's no reason to be wasting that food. Well, and I'm not talking about the sidebar. I'm back on running over a oh. wolf with your snowmobile. Yeah, that part I don't get. I think that's terrible, and I don't know why you would choose to do that. It just seems... I mean, unless it was actively doing something to pursue or harm you, then I get it. And by the way, I'm not one of the I'm not one of those save the wolves people. When they come in to, you know, yeah. threaten your livestock, boom, do it, right. dude. I'm yeah. fine with that. Control the population, whatever you got to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, are we a civilized society or not? Right, right. I do know when they did introduce wolves back into the Yellowstone ecosystem, mm-hmm. it was good for everybody. Right, yeah. So I just, I just think that is the height of what in the... Tarnation. <laughs> what in the country bumpkin? <laughs> what kind of red neckery is this? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. What's going on in Hicksville, <laughs> Hicksville Wyoming? <laughs> Moving on. Idaho is the most boring state. According Shocking to, to nobody. <laughs> according to Zipia. Okay, here's Ever the heard thing. of that website? <laughs> Me neither. It's probably great if you're an avid outdoorsman who loves to do all of the fishing and hunting and rock climbing and hiking and crap like that. Uh, or skiing, but for, you know, the rest of us. Right. Well, and and here's why. Population of over 1.89 million, Mm -hmm. over 83,570 square miles. There are roughly 22.11 people per square mile of land. Oh, okay. Which gives Idaho the seventh lowest population density in the country. Which I think is kind of nice. So the reason we're boring is, ain't nobody here. <laughs> That's fair. That said, it should be noted that Idaho is considered the fifth best state to live in. Yeah. So combining those two factors, is is that what most people want? Is a nice, boring place to live? Well, you know, that's the thing. Does I boring think mean so. quality of life? Is there a Well, I kind of think so. Because I mean, okay, living in California is probably very exciting. I would say I would categorize being chased down by a meth head exciting. But certainly not pleasant. <laughs> well, in Disneyland and Universal <laughs> right. Studios and Hollywood. Right. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying that like, Hollywood. realistically, yeah, maybe it's more exciting, but those exciting events aren't necessarily fun right. or pleasurable. <laughs> right. You know, I gotcha. would much rather be bored than have horrible things happening to keep things exciting. Yeah. I, I want to get my cardio, but I don't want to be chased by zombies. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. And and here's the <laughs> we're number one. Mm. We're number one. Here's the map. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Mm. Now I will say that when I was a teenager, the joke that I made a lot was, "Yeah, there's not a lot to do in Idaho but meth. <laughs> That's why we have so many." <laughs> yeah, which I do still think is kind of true, especially you know, if you I, don't want to go out and spend money. <laughs> you try once. Well, shut up, Mike. Not even once. You know this. You've seen the billboards. Oh, the marketing. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like. I will say that those are effective billboards. Yeah. I would never, (laughs) not once. I'm too vain to do meth, I think. Right. I don't want the teeth and the wrinkles and the (sighs) pockmarks on my skin. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) Um, But yeah. Well, and also I feel like even when people recover from meth, they still sometimes have meth face. Oh, yeah. You know, like you can just tell. Once you age forward, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of help getting back. Right, right. But anyway, um. Yeah, I feel like in general, unless you're willing to go out and spend money, it is kind of hard to find stuff to do around town. I've definitely gotten better about that in the last year, um, just because. Well, in doing this show, like yeah. we're we're more mindful of the activities mm-hmm. happening here in East Idaho. Oh, let's right. go to that. Sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, you find your fun where you make it. Right. I completely agree with that. Not only that, but I do feel like we like as a community have worked really hard to add stuff to it. I mean, you know, we've got like the art walk, the farmer's market, uh, even like auditorium just did their, uh, what's it called? The youth jam, the roaring youth jam, (laughs) you know, and that's a free event to go to too. And it was super fun. And there was stuff for kids to do. You know, I will say if you're not a parent, there's maybe not as much to do around here. If you're just a youngin. You know, yeah. probably not a lot to do. <laughs> and that that's another thing that um, makes Idaho boring is 55% of people are married. 35% yeah. of Idahoans have children. Yep. So if you're in the 45% that's single, where do you go? <laughs> yeah. What do you do? How do you meet people? Yeah. Well, especially if you're not someone who goes to bars, you know, that gets rid of basically all of the nightlife here in town. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I know some single friends who are like, I, I don't know how to meet people. There's mm-hmm. bars and there's church. 
Or there's Tinder. <laughs> and yeah, right. <laughs> and oftentimes <laughs> you don't want to go to either of those places. Right, right. Necessarily. <laughs> Yeah. Or there's Tinder, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to meet your partner in a bar or in church, I don't know where you go. <laughs> I think I think what you do, I've given this some thought. Mm-hmm. You work on Oh, your... really? You're thinking about going out and finding someone? No. <laughs> I think that a single... Because I've been single a few times in my life. I get it. And I think that the thing you got to do is work on yourself. Yeah. And when you work on yourself, you get to know yourself a little bit better, mm-hmm. your interests. Go out and do things you enjoy doing. Right. And eventually, you're going to meet a like-minded individual. I completely agree. I actually had a single friend asking me like what she should do, and I was like, dude, pick up a new hobby. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly the move. Do you. Work yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Now, that can be kind of tricky if that hobby tends to you know, only get people of the same sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless you're into that, which is great. Then it's a perfect hobby for you. But you know, if, you're, if your hobby is crocheting and you're a chick- Probably aren't going to be a lot of dudes in your crocheting circle. Right. You know, but if you find one, do, maybe he's the one. Do dudes go to <laughs> yoga? Oh, yeah. I mean, man buns are a thing. Okay. Of course, then. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a. Af- I'm so afraid to do yoga. Really? Because I'm afraid of farting. <laughs> Honestly, I totally get that. And that's yeah. part of the reasons I don't like you doing yoga. Right. Although I should probably take it up because it's like good for you and stuff. I guess. I just always thought it was kind of boring, mm-hmm. you know, but. But you're doing that downward dog and, mm-hmm. or your legs up in the air and the instructor's pushing on them. Well, yeah, there's like literally, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there's literally a pose that's something like um, escaping wind yeah. or something like that. The escaping wind pose. I don't uh-huh. remember what it's called, but yeah, it's like meant to make you fart. It sounds like a balloon animal yes. asking a question. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Have you seen those uh, TikTok trends? I just saw one like yesterday where it was people doing the like fart exercise on their dogs. Have you? Okay, you know what the fart exercise is? No. So basically, if you have a, a kid or someone who's all bloaty and they can't chew, mm-hmm. you bicycle their legs a little bit, pull them out, and then push them in, and it's supposed to make them fart. Okay. Yeah, and someone was doing that with their dog, and the dog farted, and they looked so surprised. Uh, <laughs> like they jumped right up and were like looking around. Was like, that me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But kind of funny. I've always heard the face down, ass up. That's the way we like to <laughs> fart. I've heard that. I can't even figure out what the actual word would be there. Well, Google two oh. live crew. Okay, wait, never mind. I figured it out. It just took okay. me. Okay. I was thinking that it was a fart thing, <laughs> not something else. <laughs> okay. Aww, was I a little innocent there? That's weird. That's not like L- me. <laughs> Let's talk about. Some things that aren't boring. Yeah, let's. Coming up this Friday, September 20th, Mm. at the Idaho Falls Zoo from 5.30 to 8.30. One of my favorite events, by the way. It's the Masquerade Ball. Yes, it's so exciting. You get to get dressed up. You get to wear a little mask. You get to go in. And best part is that your ticket actually gives you unlimited wine and champagne. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's only like a $35 ticket, which ain't bad. What could possibly go wrong? (laughs) Well, I think most people at this event will, you know, have a little bit of mindfulness. Sure, sure. Yeah. (laughs) They'll be demure. Yeah, very demure, very mindful. Yeah. Yeah. But (laughs) that, no, I think it sounds like a good time. Yeah, I've been. I thought it was really fun. Speaking of events where you can go out and meet people. Yes. Grab a buddy. Yes. Yes. Do the CNBC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, the year that I went, Diablo's catered, and it was fantastic. Mm. It was so good. Yeah, I'm really excited. Now, that year, it was also a more expensive ticket. I think this year you purchase your food, but I don't hate that idea either. Yeah. I think that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I definitely need to put together an outfit. So, Do you want to go? I do want to go. Do you have a masquerade? I do, and I have one for you, too. <laughs> Mask? Okay. Yeah. I actually very... So, I saw some masks on sale Forever ago, I got one for me. And while I was at it, I was like, oh, Mike would look good in this one. I should get him this. And I did. I'm very sing-songy this episode, and I apologize. That's all right. <laughs> I think it's all the sugar. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I got to put away the, the Coke. Uh, I know, right? Even I'm kind of sipping away at it. Mm-hmm. But it's making my tummy kind of feel bloaty, and I need to burp some more. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which is not ladylike, so I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> You've... Um... You've, I've heard a couple come out of your mouth that sound like you're tearing flesh. <laughs> I, I am. Actually, uh, matter Sounds of like fact, a motorcycle trying to start. 
Well, yeah, and when I'm done, too, I'll cough into a handkerchief and it's just full of blood, like mm. tuberculosis style. You have the consumption. Yes. <laughs> Satine. <laughs> oh, my little strawberry. <laughs> Man, you are feeling so theatrical today. I love it. Maybe it's this fucking sweater. <laughs> I love that sweater. I hope that's what it is. It's so cute. Okay. This is the only time you've ever worn it. and I'm just loving every moment. It does make me feel like I should have worn something a little bit more. I have this one really bitchin' sweater my mom gave me that used to be hers back in like the 90s. But it's like a white sweater with like this little crisscross pattern and embroidered flowers in each of the little diamonds. And it's really cute. And I feel like I should have worn that today instead of this one. And I'm really kicking myself for it. There's always next episode. That's true. That's sort of our motto on this show. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Man, I really screwed the pooch on that one. I <laughs> right. really ran over the wolf in my snowmobile <laughs> on this one. At least we're always looking to improve. <laughs> it's also, you know, I think sweater weather means spooky season. Yes. We've been creeping up to mentioning Halloween. <laughs> oh yeah. And here is the first big sign in my I mean other than spirit Halloween coming in August. Right. Before Labor Day. Hey, you got to get your stuff early. I get it. Um the Haunted River in Manan, one of my favorite haunted attractions in East Idaho. I'm so excited we got to go this year. Yeah. They open this Friday, September 20th. Mm-hmm. So, if you're in the mood for a premature ejaculantern, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, then, that uh, is such a great joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine. I love it though. <laughs> um, Friday, you can get your fix starting this Friday for spooky season. Oh my gosh, I have that? so many ideas in my head right now because <laughs> of that phrase. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I actually went out and bought a hundred dollars worth of of Halloween decor that I probably shouldn't have, but I was so excited about it. I actually completely changed up my Halloween decor look. Because I used to do sort of a Dia de los Muertos style. Mm, yes. Um, you know, because I was married to a Mexican citizen mm-hmm. and we sort of did both. Um, I loved all those. Are they called sugar skulls? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I loved all those. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. Um, I love Coco and I loved yes. it before when Benici, not Benicio del Toro, Guillermo del Toro <laughs> did Book right. of Life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The prequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I guess not even the prequel, the... I yeah. I almost anyway. couldn't believe it because the two came out within yeah. two or three years of each other. Right. But Disney had to have their own. I, I suppose it was probably already in development. Probably. Yeah. But, and I don't know which one. <clears throat> I think I probably like the music in Coco better. Yeah. But Book of Life was It was so awesome. neatly stylized. Yeah. 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 I mean, Coco made me cry, though. When he goes, but, but Mama Coco. Ah! D- yeah. Kills me every Disney time. knows how to. Yeah. Tug. <laughs> right? You were saying. Uh, anyway, so I switched from a, D- a Day of the Dead themed Halloween decoration thing to now I'm doing more of a like groovy, spooky type vibe. Mm. It's sort of like hippie-tastic. Uh, so like we talked about before, a lot of my decorations are going to be pink this year. And I'm so freaking excited. Pink and orange. Uh-huh. Every time. I was at your place two or three times uh-huh. last week. Yeah. And every time I'm there, there's one more thing. <laughs> First, it was the throw pillow that we talked about last episode. It's so cute. I think we're done. Are we done? I think Have we, we covered are. everything? It seems like a short show, but I, I bet it's going to be about the same as usual. Yeah. We do have something to leave you with, though. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I guess it's been up on YouTube for a month, but I just saw it in a sponsored ad on Facebook mm-hmm. today, right before the show. I'm like, oh, we got to play that. Uh huh. Because it contains two videos of idiots. In Yellowstone National Park, being idiots. Oh, really? That are real videos. Oh, yes. Yeah, let's let's watch this. So the Jackson Hole Travel and Tourism Board and why they're marketing now is beyond me. So I think they've been doing it for a hot minute. Okay. Um, but I tend to skip the ad because that's what I do every time I get an ad. <laughs> and I love ads. Yeah. They just released this ad. It's really cute. It's mm-hmm. for selfie control. <laughs> As in self-control. But selfie control. Have a great week. And make sure you go over and subscribe to our YouTube. There is a link in the post for that. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Here we are in Jackson Hole, this time observing some very peculiar behavior. One might think 42 teeth and 2-inch claws would be enough to deter these homo sapiens, but they seem unfazed. Oh, my. Sir, put down your camera and back away. A similar phenomenon is occurring in the valley. 
where a 180 pound bipedal creature is challenging a 2,000 pound bison. Sir, you are oh, not God. wise. Oh, and that bison is. Oh, God. They're not happy. And all oh. humans are required to stay at least 100 yards away from bears and wolves, and at least 25 yards away from all other wildlife. And for Pete's sake, get some selfie control.